Hi, I'm Tzu Yang, Head of Legal here at Jungle Ventures, and I want to take some time to talk to you about investment documents, so long-form definitive documents for a VC or other big investor into a founder-led company. That's things that you might have heard of, like SSAs, SHAs. Let's talk about what these are and how they work. Once we've managed to get a term sheet all agreed and signed and all aligned, it's then time to do what I was thinking was the fun part and to look at what are the definitive documents or the investment documents. The actual long form contracts that will govern how the investment is made into the company and how the company runs going forward. Usually these are split up, so there will be number one, a subscription agreement, and that subscription agreement governs how investors and anyone else putting money into the company puts money in in exchange for shares. So that document's a one-shot document. It's functional for a short period of time where the money comes in and then the shares are, are distributed out. The shareholders agreement is the long-term document. That's what governs the relationship between the shareholders of a company. So what rights and obligations the founders have, what rights and obligations the investors have going forward. So that's a long-run document for the life of the company. One more which is important is the articles of the company or the constitution of the company. And so they will usually be done right at the end of the process and simply replicate whatever is in the shareholders agreement. The most efficient way of doing the Toyota document process is to have a single lead investor or at least a group of very well aligned lead investors in, in a party round who will do a first cut of the document. Obviously you'll need to get your lawyers, your advisors to comment on it, but this is something that we're prepared to go with today. That starts off the founders who you know, maybe haven't done this before or haven't thought about these things in detail, a really solid base that they can comment on and get to an end of the deal quickly. It's really important that founders have a network of people they can talk to and work out where they are situated relative to you know, other people in the market, other founders, other companies at the same stage and you know, same kind of investor base as them. Because that gives people the certainty and the security of knowing that they are talking about the things they should talk about and they're agreeing things within the range of what is fair to the founders. And the best way to do that is to talk around people in your own industry and of course getting your own legal counsel to give you legal advice on the document. The subscription agreement is a fairly simple document. It doesn't have an extended lifetime. It's just about the investors are putting capital, putting money into the company, they're getting shares back. So the key things from an investor perspective are what's the risk allocation? The investors will never know and understand the company as the founders and the key employees of the company themselves. So in terms of risk allocation, the investors will expect that the founders will be willing to put their names behind the company and say, we promise you that this list of warranties, which is just a list of factual statements about the company's business, all these things are true. Just the simple fundamental things about the business that give the investors the comfort and the certainty that they're putting their money into what they think they're putting their money into. The other main point from the founder's perspective is deal certainty. And deal certainty is about how many conditions are there to the investor actually putting their money in. For example, signing your subscription agreement and saying, we'll put your money in, but only if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The way for founders to think about that is if that list is getting too long and getting too complex, something's probably gone wrong. And the something could be, was your business really ready to raise funding if you've got this many things wrong with it? Or is it that the person you're talking to is being a bit unrealistic about what an early stage business can do? There's no general purpose answer to this and you have to have a sensible discussion between the founders and investors and your advisors But how many of these things are realistic to fix in the time you have versus how many of these things can just be fixed after the funding goes in? Tidy ups are kind of the flip side of the coin of, of the are there problems in the business question. If something is really a tidy up, you know, if it's not a, such a huge fundamental problem at the business that where there's uncertainty about whether it can be solved or not, then it's really what we would call a tidy up and we say, okay, maybe some of the documents that you decided in the past weren't absolutely perfect, but this is a fixable problem and we'll give you some time to fix it. We just need to know that you have the willingness to fix it and that's really a tidy up that goes to the future. It can be that people feel differently about tidy up items. Some, there will be some investors who feel much more strongly about some than others. And again, that's where dialogue is very important between the founder and the investors to work out, is there really a principles-based alignment here? You have to be able to sit down and have that discussion. 
It's always important to be optimistic as a founder and you should always be having at least one eye towards the round that follows this round because almost guaranteed you will inherit that document for the next round and people will come to you and say, okay, you did this last time, my default or my anchoring starting point is let's do the same thing next time with the names changed and maybe a couple of other tweaks. So you should not make the documents too complex or you know, too specific because you will have to keep on giving that same document again and again and again. In short, it's best to get it right the first time.